talk about white people. Since the Mayflower, it's been much better to be white in the US than anything else. But whiteness is tricky. Not all white people were created equal. White people with power have had to reconstruct the definition of whiteness over time. And luckily they can do that because whiteness is just something made up and used as a tool to preserve power. For instance, in the 17th century, indentured servants and slaves in Virginia joined together to fight against the ruling class in Bacon's Rebellion. At that time, poor white and black people were more or less considered and treated the same, which was badly. They ended up losing that battle, but the elites realized just how dangerous unity was among the lower classes. They decided it was better to divide them, allowing poor white people to identify with the economic elites based on race, rather than with black people over class issues. White indentured servants were given the rights to property and to own guns, and they were charged with policing the plantations. This, along with establishing harsh slave codes, divided the classes along racial lines. Virginia was the first state to establish a comprehensive slave code, and it served as a model for other states in the following years. This reinforced this idea of an other, a natural enemy to whites who were made to believe their whiteness was the norm and everyone else was someone to be suspicious of. They hate white people because white people are successful and they're not. It's this idea that white is right and other cultures are inherently wrong that's carried through our nation's history throughout waves of immigration in the late 19th and early 20th century until today. What, where did any other subgroup of people contribute more to civilization? Than white people? Well, than, than Western civilization itself that's rooted in Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and the United States of America. Okay. But there was a time when Irish, Italians, Jews, Eastern Europeans, they all weren't considered white. In fact, the Irish were commonly compared to blacks when they first came to the US and even lived and worked side by side with each other. But you had to earn your white card and it wasn't easy. Over time, the Irish, along with Germans, Italians, and other Europeans have been folded into this idea of whiteness, which is super helpful since the Naturalization Act of 1790 restricted naturalization to free white persons. When huge numbers of immigrants were coming to the U.S. at the turn of the 20th century, resources and jobs were scarce. European immigrants, like many of the Irish, locked down the cheapest and most menial jobs. They rose up by the time labor unions were forming and managed to keep black workers from joining. They also actively fought against the abolitionist movement. Now, obviously, there were exceptions to the rule, and no one label can describe an entire group of people. But for the most part, each group was willing to throw other groups under the bus to climb the social ladder. So as America kept expanding, the definition of whiteness had to expand. And as a card-carrying white person, you get all the privileges it entails, from better employment opportunities, access to higher education, and, you know, avoiding that pesky police brutality thing. Donald Trump became the Republican nominee for president based largely on a platform of keeping out Mexicans and Muslims. And instead of the poor and working class uniting, racial tension and xenophobia distract us from a very real division, money, the haves and the have nots and the policies that strengthen the security of the 1%. But as the country becomes browner and browner, the idea that white folks are naturally superior to non-white folks is going to sound increasingly ridiculous.